Good morning, students. Welcome to Chapter 4. Today we are going to look at front office operations. And uh, by the end of this class, I want you to be able to summarize the front office operations during the four stages of the guest cycle. I will also want you to be able to describe front office recording systems and the front office documentations. I also want you to describe the front desk and its support devices and describe the services and equipment of a hotel's tele telecommunication area. And lastly, I would like you to identify and describe property management systems used by the uh, front office. Uh, as you can see there, uh, we have images of uh, reception in the front desk. They just show you dif two different types of reception areas. They don't have necessarily to look alike. As you can see there, you have uh, the reservationists or the front office uh, uh, staff members, the receptionists working on the other side, and the guest is the one on that side in black. There you can also see there's also another picture of the front desk where you can see the gentleman they're checking in, looking really clean and pretty. Okay. Now, to introduce this uh, unit to you, uh, all the functions or activities and areas of the front office are geared towards supporting the guest transaction and services, meaning everything that happens at the front desk is there to help the journey of the guest while they are visiting your establishment. Critical to the success of the department and the hotel are appropriately designed and used front office work area like equipments, the forms, the reports, etc. Paramount is the accurate planning and monitoring of the front office transactions. And to many guests, the front office is, is actually the hotel, meaning if I enter the reception and I am not happy or, or you, you disappoint me, I will definitely associate that with the whole hotel. So once your front desk personnel or the receptionists are very smiley and happy people, then you make sure that you have guaranteed the guest stay, okay? So let's look at the guest cycle now. What is a guest cycle? The guest cycle is actually the guest journey from the day they are picking up the phone to make an arrival, and that is the stage, stage one, the, the pre-arrival. That's the first stage that the guests do. They just don't show up, although you get some of the guests that, get, that show up. So the first cycle that the guests do is to book a hotel. We call that pre-arrival. So he, he, he prepares, he, pre, he preps his arrival before he comes. And then the second one, that's when he's on the premises. That's when he has arrived. Okay, that's the second cycle. The third cycle, we call it an in-house person or in-house guest. Now the guest is comfortable and he is in his hotel and he's now using um, or using of the services, the facilities. Meaning, remember the, at the introduction when we were talking about the guests, the all functions that, are, that happens in the hotel. Now that happens during that cycle. The guest is eating, he's playing golf, for example, he's watching TV, he's doing all these activities, you know. So that is it's all connected to the reception and obviously the other areas of the hotel. And the last cycle is the departure when the guest is ready to go. And it's also very important because that's when he's going to leave us our money. So we make sure that this guest is happy while he was in-house. Otherwise, when he goes, he will be disappointed. So departure is a very, very important cycle that we'll all make sure that the guest departs very well so he can come back again. Okay, we can, we'll go into detail later for that. So we have them there. The cycle is the pre-arrival is the first one. The arrival is the second. The occupancy and the departure. As you can see, they, you know, they are now divided into what, when it's pre-arrival, what does it mean? It means the guest is during with the, the first uh, item, with, which is the reservations. The guest is doing his reservations at pre-arrival. And at arrival, that's when the staff members of the uh, establishment are involved, meaning the front office staff members, when they are checking in, in the housekeeping staff, when they are uh, cleaning for him, uh, the desk uh, agents, meaning if he's paying his bills and so forth. And the fourth group, which is the occupancy, here we know that the 
in the during the occupancy stage we obviously have the housekeeping department that cleans the food and beverage that actually make uh, uh, food and etc the drinks the restaurants and other centers like maybe the internet center or so forth there are so many things that happens during the occupancy and that also determines how busy or rather how uh, best we are serving our guests and that will make their departure smooth and obviously between we also see there there's something between occupancy and, and departure and this a cashier meaning please pay so when, once the guest uh, departs he pays first and obviously now once again the uniform staff which are the porters will escort him out okay now if you're going to detail you'll see what the pre-arrival means now i want you to read through this pre-arrival what it means exactly like i said is when the guest chooses the hotel he chooses the location he chooses the type of uh, 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 business he wants, whether it's a business or his vacation with his family, or it's just a lodge, or it's, it's an island, you know, it depends on what type of uh, a booking the person wants. So that's the pre arrival. When you come to arrive at the, the arrival stage, it's when the guest is at the front desk with a registration card, he's filling in, he wants a room, he wants one of the, of the most beautiful room. And he hopes to expect what he saw in prospectus that he's going to be in a, a good room. And through this uh, 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 stage, we also have arrivals that were never part of the pre-arrival. Those ones we call them walk-ins because these guys just walk in. He was probably driving in town and he sees a beautiful hotel. He can walk in and ask for a room. You cannot say no just because he did not have a pre-arrival. You can only know. So you can only say no if you don't have rooms available. Okay. Then we have the occupancy. Occupancy, like I said earlier, is where the guests basically spend all his money, stay most of the time because they stay longer. And during this occupancy, he, the guest, the front desk is, re is responsible for coordinating services for guests. They say a major objective during this stage is to serve guests so well that they will want to come back again. Very important. We must make sure that our guests come back. Okay. Now, and it happens during this occupancy. If we don't give them good security, good money, I mean, good service for their money, they will never come back. Okay? Then we have the departure. The departure, like I said, is also important. The final stage of the guest cycle, guest services and guest accounting aspects are completed during this stage. You want to see well, how much the guest used. Now you need to make sure he, he, he is accounted for all the good things, all the things that he took. Guests should also be asked during checkout how they enjoy their stay. Okay, and during the checkout process, a guest uh, creates that when you automatically create or add to his file in the guest history. Whether now, he, maybe before he was just a normal guest, now he grew 10 years after his diabetes, for example. So he was, he's got a special remarks or he's, you know, he's allergic to a certain thing. So you, you must capture all those things in the guest uh, log. And obviously, sometimes we have late charges during this, uh, this, um, the, the, during this stage. Make sure all charges are posted to the guest account before they leave. Okay. The following are the room status uh, terms. It's also, if you are in a hotel and you are especially at the front desk or in, if you are in the rooms, you need to know the following room status occupancy. I mean, room status terms. Pardon me. Occupied meaning a guest is currently register to the room complimentary obviously you know the guest is occupied the, the room but he's not paying we have stay over we have on change do not disturb i want you to know this is very important this will be in your first test sleep out i guess is registered to the room but the bed has not been used you know the list is long i want you to know vacant and ready what does it mean out of order the room cannot be assigned to a guest okay lockout the room is expected to become vacant you know all these things I want you to know them. Okay. Also, the room types. We also need to know what type of rooms are we offering to our, our guests. You know, single does not mean single to anyone. When I say a single room, people that are not from the industry thinks you can actually sleep four in a single room. No, a single room means a room is assigned to one person only. May have one or more beds, meaning that specific room can be called a twin room or a double room once there are two people so a double room is assigned to two people may have one big bed or even more two big beds or 
two single beds that can be put together depending on the policy of the establishment. Then we have a triple room, or rather, yeah, in the triple room, a room assigned to three people. You might find three beds in there. And you have a quad room. This room is obviously for four persons, and you find four beds. And we have a queen room, a room with a queen size bed, maybe occupied by one or more. It depends on if you want to share a room. Okay, I also want you to know this by heart. They are quite very, very important. A few examples there. This could be a single. If I'm a single person, I'm, I, I can't get this room. Pay a single rate, but I'm sleeping on a double bed. Or two people can actually sleep on the bed. They will be booked in as a double bed. Okay? In room, normally we have two beds, separate beds. Because you could be mates. You don't have to necessarily to be uh, men and wife, but you could be two men, two ladies. You can sleep in a twin room, each one of their beds. Then we get uh, the quad, but the triple, where you have three beds in the room. And obviously, the quad, you have four beds. These are not single beds, as you can see, these beds are quite big, so they are quite nice. So you can also share a room, four people, and you that means you pay less. Okay, and queen size with a queen bed, queen size bed. This is beautiful examples there. And then we even have the king size bed. There now you can roll on it. You can be one, two, three. I don't know. You know, I think the, the sky is the limit there when it comes to the king size bed, and you also pay very, very expensively for that. Then we we'll continue with the room types. What, what is it made by double? Double, meaning a room with a double room or perhaps a queen size may be occupied by one or more people. Okay. What is a studio? What is a suite? What is a connecting room? As you can remember, we already saw when we were visiting the hotel, we saw that room with the connecting door. We saw the main room, room 15, with, a, with I mean, with two rooms. But this, you can be one, one for the parents, one for the kids, you know. So normal rooms, studio, that's how they look like. A mini suite or a junior suite. You even have a dining table in it, meaning you can eat just next to your bed. How luxurious. There is this is a normal suite, meaning you have the bed, bed but you also have a dining sort of hall, uh, like a, a little lounge there that you can sit your guests, but your bed is so, still there. You can have a, a, a semi-meeting also there. Okay? Connecting rooms, as you can see, there's a door there, two rooms with a door connecting these two rooms to each other, okay? And then the adjacent room, you can also see, they're next to each other. You can have your kids in one room and the parents in the one room, but they are next to each other. You don't have to, to go far to look for a kids. Adjoining room, and you see also, this is a room, this is a room. They are joined to each other, okay? So I want you to know that. In the front of this system, the systems that we use, they say, I mean, long time ago, obviously, they, they had uh, funny systems. Semi-automated front office systems began to be seen in the hotels only in the 70s, which was a long time ago, even. That's the years we were born, eh? And the fully automated system arrived in the 1980, comprehensive automated systems in the 1990s, and obviously now we have it all. Everything now is computerized. It makes our life much, much easier. But you also need to know, you know, as you can see, the front office system, you know, now we have a computerized system. In the older times, we used to do it by hand. Everything was by hand. You get a page. There was a book, actually, where you book in. Now we are so fortunate with all the systems. And all of you guys that are doing in-keep, you know what I'm talking about. Okay? And we have the front office system, pre-arrival activities. You know them. You have done it. And it's much easier if you can do it perfectly. All day, I just want you to read through and you compare your notes. So when we come to the front office documents, I want you to know that your front office documents uh, 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 for pre-arrival, you need basically two, the reservation file and the reservation confirmation, where you have the information and where you have the confirmation for your guests. And the arrival document, once the guests are there, obviously the registration record, and you just verify their credits and their authorization, uh, payment, cash payments, etc. For the occupancy is to keep uh, an eye on their uh, on their folios or what they eat and drink, whatever they are using. Make sure that it's it's posted to their account, and you work with uh, different types of vouchers. Is this voucher paid by the company, by the guest, or so forth? You just have to know what type of documents to use. And obviously, when it comes to the departure, you have the guest folio, which is obviously the printout that you give to the guest, so the guest can, for example, okay. I'm, Let's go to types of telephone calls that we find 
We have the local ones with the di direct dial prepayment card collected. These questions normally come in uh, when guests are asking you what type of, uh, how can I get hold of my family? Then you first probably say you have a phone in your room or we have a prepayment card. You can do a collect call. You have a cell phone and you just give them all this, uh, you know, uh, information and telecommunication equipment that we have in the hotel. We have the switchboard, call accounting system, the guest room phones. We have the pay phones. We have the cell phones. So nowadays with cell phones, everything is so, so easy. So, but the guests need to know sometimes you tell them all this information if they're asking. Okay? And then you, there you're going to details what is a telephone switchboard and how you can go on. You know, what is a switchboard? What is a call account? I want you to go through that. What is a guest room phone? You know, you tell the guests that the phone next to your bed. Pages, obviously, they're still in fashion. And cell phones that we know. And any other telecommunications that the guests can use. And lastly, we are talking about property management systems. These are the, the systems that make sure that our business runs smoothly. Okay, we have the reservation management software that makes sure that the reservations are, are kept in the in the machine, and and every time you make a booking, it comes in automatically, or rather, invented in the machine in the computer. We have the rooms management, making sure the rooms uh, are charged, guest account, whatever the guests are eating or drinking. If the guest account does its, its, its thing, general management could be now for HR, back office also for housekeeping, system interfaces for obviously for the guys that are in IT, and sales automation systems. Okay. And then they go into detail also where I will not go in, but I want you to do that yourself. And you go and you read for yourself and find out what is the back office system means and what does it, what, how, how, how does it help. The, 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 the hotel runs smoothly. Okay, and this is the end. Any questions, please?